My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levin presents. Hi friends, I'm David Hart. Welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. And I'm Kirsten Hart. Welcome to Psalms of Ascent, our series taught by Dr. Jeffrey Seif. Yes. And this series first aired in the summer of 2010. The Psalms of Ascent are Psalms 120 through 134 that were sung or spoken by Israelites as they went up to the temple in Jerusalem. We're excited in this series to have with us Eitan Shishkoff, Chaim Mailspin is our good friend. We have a brand new Hebrew teacher. Her name is Sarah Lieberman. She's great, and we can't wait for you to meet her. Also, Marty Getz will be bringing some great music in this whole series. Now let's open our Bibles or your laptop to Psalm 120. It's only seven verses long. And the question today is, how do you deal with slander? But first, let's go to our dramatic reenactment in Israel. King David had been here before. More than once they had come to the table, extending pleasantries and speaking of peace. Yet they did so with lying lips and deceitful tongues. Would this evening be any different? Could this exchange bring peace among the nations? My soul had long dwelt with him that hated peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they war. The psalmist says in 120 verse 7, Ani shalom, I am for peace. Vikia daber, but when I speak, hemo lemilchama, they are for war. Isn't it tragic in human affairs that individuals can be sincere on the one hand, only to have to contend with individuals that are disingenuous on the other. They lack candor, they're not forthright, they're deceitful. There's all kinds of machinations. Some call it the world of politics, where people are forever posturing, but what is the truth, who knows? In fact, sometimes in political conversation, truth is the first casualty. I'm speaking to you from Israel now, not just any place, it's a hill. It's not just any hill, but oddly, it's called the Hill of Evil Council. At one level, it's so fitting because behind me, placed atop this hill, if you can imagine that, is the regional headquarters for the United Nations. And if ever there was a place where there's political jockeying going on, it is there. In fact, it's rather tragic, it seems to me. The UN started off as a great idea. Let's all get together and work out our problems and make love and not war. It makes good sense. But it's one of those cases where the reality doesn't quite live up to the ideal. And the reason is, is because the United Nations, sometimes disparagingly called the United Nothing, in so many ways is in the hands of people with money and oil. And the net result is that the Jews always get castigated. It's interesting, by the way, that this would be the first of the Psalm of Ascents in part because not only is the story of political intrigue and backbiting, not only is it true in every generation, but here the statement comes on the heels of the psalmist saying in verse 5, Woe is me, I dwell beside the tents of Kedar. And pray tell who was Kedar. This was the second son of Ishmael. And what's meant by the tents of Kedar? Well, in this context, Bedouins particularly. It seems to me that this is someone that knows what it is to be duped by these people, and we're going back thousands of years. And goodness, it could be said things just don't change. It's distressing. Well, talk about distressing. The psalmist starts off with that very word. It says, Shir Hama'alot, the song of ascents, El Adonai to the Lord, Bat Saratali. Um, 
in my distress, uh, I called on the Lord. In my distress. It's distressful on the one hand, striking, disturbing. I never in my life had a problem with depression, but frankly, when I contemplate the way the Jews are forever castigated in the United Nations, I'll tell you, it is rather depressing because it's unreal. While it's true that we have our Bernie Madoffs, we have our scoundrels, we deal with them. There are Israeli politicians that go bad, we deal with it. The courts are open and they get drugged to and through the courts. But on the whole, the truth is, is that the Jews are a good lot and Israel is a great state. We're surrounded by shenanigans. And that is so true today. The world around here has come ablaze. There's cascading unrest in Libya, uh, certainly in Yemen, Bahrain, all the countries round about Jordan, Syria, uh, Egypt, uh, Tunisia, everywhere round about has nothing to do with Jews, has nothing to do with Israel. It has everything to do with people being oppressed by wicked oppressors. Islamic lords, kings, generals, people that came to power, marginalize others and abuse their own. What they all have in common, however, is a disdain for the Jew, the willingness to make Israel the world's problem in part to deflect from their own misdeeds. And it is so very deceitful the way this plays out politically. Whatever Israel does in the United Nations, there's a block of Arab countries that automatically votes against it, whether uh, there's any wrong done or not. And beyond that, there's 50 or 60 countries in tow that, that, that have uh, oil agreements and others with these Arab countries that are just going to go wherever they go. The net result is that whatever Jews do, we're castigated here. And the problem is, the facade is, it holds out the ideal of being liberal, honest, and earnest, seeking world peace. But truth be known, it's fallen prey to malicious intentions. And that is what invokes the ire of this psalmist. And he says in verse 2, he says, Adonai, O Lord, hatsila nafshi, deliver my soul, mishpat sheker, from lying lips, miloshon, from a tongue, remio, that's deceitful. Well, to be sure, uh, this has political ramifications in the world that we live in today. And it had political ramifications yesterday. It has personal applications too. The psalmist here is writing a song that beckons individuals or that speaks to individuals that are beckoned out of various places to come to Jerusalem and worship. They want to come to a safe harbor in a world that's precarious outside. They want to come to Jerusalem, to God's holy hill and God's holy house and seek him there for the troubles of the day. And so they pray and we do well to stand with them as they want to stand against decay, deceit, and deal with the attendant despair that's all about Israel as individuals are looking to carve out space here in the ancestral homeland. Our resource this week is the series called Together, Jew and Gentile, One in Messiah on DVD. David and Kirsten Hart present the teachings of Eitan Shishkoff. These eight programs show how both sides of the body of Messiah are grafted together. We also have interviews, location reports, Hebrew lessons, and music. When you contact us, ask for Called Together on DVD. Sha'alu shalom Yerushalayim Sha'alu shalom shalom in the holy city of Jerusalem, we will pray for peace. Shalom, shalom. We invite you to see the land of King David, who wrote the Psalms of Ascent, the Holy Land for yourself. We go two times a year in the spring and in the fall. In the fall, you can add on a land tour of Greece and a tour of the Greek islands. Go to our website, levitt.com. Click on the tour page for more information. We're going back to our dramatic reenactment and then Dr. Jeffrey Seip will finish up our lesson for the day. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. 
My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. In Psalm 121, one of the more famous of these songs of ascent, songs that were sung along the way, we have an interesting expression in 121 verse 3, he says, and I quote, Al yitain la mot ragleka, he will not let your foot be moved. And as I move about this terrain that's not altogether comfortable, I can't help but think of individuals that would make their way through life in a very precarious way. I think of animals that would traverse the hills that need to be very sure-footed. And in the psalm, the psalmist speaks to God being not just the wind beneath our wings to hark to a popular song, but God himself being the one that helps us to be sure-footed. I want to explore this psalm with you in the interest of helping you to be more sure-footed as you make your journey through life. And so if you would please open up your Bible to Psalm 21, 121. I want to read it in my version and unpack it. You go ahead and read it in yours. It says in Hebrew, Esa enai el heharim. I will lift up my eyes to the hills or to the mountains. May ayin yavo Azri, from whence does my help come? Ezri me'im Adonoi, my help comes from the Lord. Ose Shemayim va'aretz, who made the heavens and the earth. Is this sounding familiar to you? You read in the opening in Genesis, Bereshit, Baral Hima Shemayim ve'aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And that creator God is a helper. And this psalmist says that uh, he lifts his eyes to the Lord, uh, to the hills, to get in touch with the Lord, to in effect be his helper. He says, Al yitain la mot ragleka, he will not let your foot be moved. Al yonum shomrecha, and that he who keeps you will not slumber. Hine lo yonum velo yisan shomer Yisrael. Behold, he that keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. What a promise. Now, when we open up the Psalms, we're going back thousands of years, and many of us may not conceptually think in terms of looking to the hills to see help come from the Lord from those hills. And the reason why is because we're not ancient Israelites who were beholden to space. The reason why I say that is in the Torah, in the scripture, in no uncertain terms, there was a place that God would make his name to dwell, his glory to dwell. And the Israelites were beckoned not to search for God everywhere, but to go there to a place called Jerusalem. And here the compliant are dutifully making their way there with a song where they give voice to lifting up their eyes to the hills, looking to find God there. And let me tell you, as someone who has led pilgrims to Israel for years, a thing that fascinates me is the experience that pilgrims have when they make their way to Jerusalem. People come, you'll see on this program, it advertises, if you want to come to Israel, come with us. And people have been taking us up in the offer for years. And they'll always ask me, well, you know, Jeff, what's your favorite site in the Holy Land? Quite frankly, having seen a lot of the stones before, uh, one of my favorite sites is to look at the faces of pilgrims who make their way to Jerusalem. And why is that? Well, on the one hand, many with me construe the fact there is a Jewish presence in Israel fulfills Bible prophecy. There's a sense in which they're walking into a world that's unfolding according to a biblical plan. Beyond that, there's this sense of walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Beyond that, there's a sense, especially when they touch the stones there at the Western Wall, there's a sense in which they walk back into history and at some level experience what the psalmist is seeing singing about here as he gives voice to lifting up his eyes to the hills to find help from God. Oh, many have looked to the Psalms to find him, especially in times of distress. 
and as I unpack it to you here from a place not far from Jerusalem, I'm coming to you in proximity to a place called Anatoth, where Jeremiah fared from. It was a priestly city. And the religious would leave their stations in their various towns and cities, and they would make their way to Jerusalem on a pilgrim. Uh, as a pilgrim, they'd go on a pilgrimage. And it's my hope that you, through experiencing this series, will similarly be minded, if not to make it to Jerusalem, at least to lift up your eyes to the hills and find Jehovah God there. And why should you do that? Because like the psalmist, you will find that your help will come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. It has been eight years since Psalms of Ascent first aired and not a whole lot has changed since then. We need to stand behind Israel as it is defamed. Chaim Malespin is the man beyond the headlines and let's go to him with his perspective on what's happening in Israel right now. Hey guys, Chaim Malespin here. Let me give you a headline. Quiet day by the Jordan River, peaceful day listen to a little bit of blues. You know, that doesn't make headlines. If it bleeds, it reads. You know, and I'm tired of fake news too. Yes, frankly, we need to be seeing more of Israel having picnics, helping with the Syrian crisis. A friend of mine just went there to Syria to help with the young people who are at risk there, who are in great need. You know, the medical breakthroughs, the technological breakthroughs, the agricultural breakthroughs, the water innovation that Israel's doing, which is blessing the world. Truth be told, Israel is a great, peaceful place to come. I don't want to hear any more people saying, what does Israel have? Bombs, guns? No, let me tell you what they have. Prophecy being fulfilled and God's love being poured out. Come on, come visit, see for yourself and bear testimony to your church, your congregation, your community that it is just amazing and beautiful here. Our resource this week is the series called Together, Jew and Gentile, One in Messiah on DVD. David and Kirsten Hart present the teachings of Eitan Shishkoff. These eight programs show how both sides of the body of Messiah are grafted together. We also have interviews, location reports, Hebrew lessons, and music. When you contact us, ask for Called Together on DVD. Called Psalms of Ascent. Ascent comes from a word meaning to go up. Transcend means to cross over and go up. Help us to cross coast to coast. Television isn't cheap. We don't want to just ascend. We want to transcend. We got a great message. We need your help in telling it. Please be gracious and make a kind donation to Zola Levitt Ministries. Thank you for your financial support of this ministry as we continue to spread the word of the importance of always supporting Israel. We hope you are enjoying learning the Hebrew language as much as we are. Today, we will learn another Hebrew name for God. Here's Sarah. Shalom, chavirim. We're here in the city of Jerusalem talking about the names of God. And one of the names that King David mentions in Psalm 90 is Adonai Ma'on, which means my dwelling place. Ma'on is the place where I live or the place where I dwell. And so when we worship, when we pray, it's a beautiful thing to use the name Adonai Ma'on. God, you are my dwelling place. And here in Jerusalem is a place where God shows to bring his presence to dwell in the midst of Israel. In Psalm 24, King David says that God dwells in the midst of the praises of Israel. So as you worship and as you pray, you can use this name and adore God and thank Him that He is our dwelling place, Adonai Ma'on. Sarah's great, isn't she? I love her spirit and her teaching. It's His great. It's great energy. Shall we try it? So it's Adonai Ma'on. Ma'on. And Ma'on means dwelling place. Yes, that's great. I like that he is our dwelling place where we dwell. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Now let's go back to Israel, but this time up to Haifa with our good friend, Eitan Shishka. Shalom, 
Shalom, I'm Eitan Shishkoff uh, of Tents of Mercy in Israel. We're actually sitting in my office in Kiryat Yam, which is uh, right next to the Haifa Bay. And um, I want to talk about the miracle of uh, Israel's restoration and uh, the fact that in the changing and uncertain times that we're in, there are some things that are of great encouragement, namely the fact that God fulfilled His promise to have mercy on His people, on His scattered Jewish people that uh, have been in the nations, scattered to the nations for some uh, 18, 19 centuries since the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, there's a, a chapter in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, in which God speaks about the wounding uh, and the incurable affliction uh, that the Jewish people will endure in the diaspora. And we certainly know from history that that's the case. But then he goes on and he gives this verse, Behold, I will bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. One day in prayer, God spoke this very reality to me, um, highlighting the word mercy. I didn't know this verse was in the, even in the Bible, but I, I felt a download of God's mercy, of His compassion, particularly toward our scattered people. This was at the same time as the Jewish people were being released from the former Soviet Union around 1989, and it was a, a wave uh, of the sense of God's heart of bringing His people back, of not allowing them to stay and of fulfilling His word that He would restore Israel to be once again a place of flowing milk and honey. And certainly He has done that. We've seen uh, over a million uh, Jewish people return from the former Soviet Union uh, over less than 20 years' time. And uh, this, is, this is what God says as well in the book of Isaiah uh, where He says, that you should not say that the Lord has forsaken me, but that He has had mercy on His afflicted. Can a woman forget the child uh, that is nursing uh, at her breast? No more will I forget you uh, than that woman would forget her child. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. This is an amazing image of Yeshua uh, on the cross of His crucifixion, which God here is joining together uh, as a way of expressing His love to all of Israel. Um, I would like to say that God has performed a miracle in uh, bringing His people back to Israel, and this is an ultimate expression of His mercy and His compassion. You can count on it. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. Ma'adir shimcha b'chur ha'aretz Adonai, Adonai, Adonai Asher t'nahor cha ha'ashamayim When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars which you ordain. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? and babes whom you ordained. What is man that you were mindful of him and the son of man that you visited? Your name 
and all of the earth. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name, your holy name, given so freely for us to claim the name Yeshua. And you humbled yourself Only to be exalted Messiah, your exalted Oh Lord, our Lord How excellent is your name in all of the earth is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. Thank you, Marty. We are honored to bring you the best Messianic musicians and the best Messianic teachers. Dr. Seif today talked on Psalm 120, and I want to read the first verse one more time. It says, in my distress, I cried to the Lord. And this is the best part. It says, and he heard me. That's our encouraging word for you this week. When you call to him, he will be faithful to hear your voice. Next week, we will continue our series, Psalms of Ascent. But until then, Sha'alu Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.